So the best way that I can deal with it is uh, I look at a few things. One is look at the relationship, I try to, of the United States with its allied nations. Um, the United States, of course, is without question the senior partner in n nearly all of its relations with other nations. You look at Europe, which is nothing really more than a vassal of the United States at this point through NATO. You look at the uh, Canadian government and military, ditto. You look at a U.S. relationship with all of its other, um, for perfect example, uh, when you study the global military spending, all right, right now the United States spends about 40% of all military spending in the world. That's by far and away the greatest. Now there's China and Russia, which are two and three in the ranking, 8% and 3%. And then all of the other nations that follow are, in fact, U.S. vassal states, I would suggest to you. Even a nation like Brazil, which has been under essentially an undeclared U.S. attack in the last few months, the Brazilian, a former Brazilian pre president, Dilma Rousseff, who we know um, through the Snowden revelations, her, her cell phone, her emails, all of the cell phone and emails of her ministers were all monitored by NSA. If Dilma Rousseff had wanted to say something like this, the heck with the United States secrecy, we're going, we have our own UFO cases, we're going to disclose them. I guarantee you, Dilma Rousseff would have to be very careful about her planning of such an event because none of it would go without the so-called five eyes, that is NSA and the NSA equivalents in other nations. Uh, they would know. Uh, the United States has, this is never discussed in international politics, but the United States dominates nearly all of the other nations, except China, except Russia, and a few other smaller nations like Iran and Syria and so forth, North Korea. But Russia and China are the big wild cards. That's a whole other conversation we'll need to have. I believe the reason for the secrecy in general, partly U.S. domination, over the system and then partly over genuine fear of all of these nations over the implications of what would absolutely be a post-petroleum economy because there's no way that a president's going to say these flying saucers or UFOs are real. It'll take all of five minutes before people start to realize they're using something other than petroleum to go from point A to point B. And implicit then is a post-petroleum global infrastructure. Okay, uh, a quick comment. Uh, Mr. Hallier would like to, uh, to weigh in on this. Yes, one additional person in Ottawa who would know uh, is the Chief of um, Emergency Measures. And um, the reason I know is I interviewed the previous one who is now deceased. And he went to Langley and uh, the CIA asked him if he would, they would like, he would like to uh, see one of these uh, craft. And um, they flew him to Area 51 and let him go inside one and observe it and make notes and all of this sort of thing. I guess presumably to be in better, a better position to cope with it if one crashed uh, here and he was uh, involved in, uh, in trying to do uh, something positive about it. And, uh, but before he was allowed to go, he had to sign an oath of secrecy and not tell anybody. And during his life, he didn't tell anybody, including his wife. And an Air Force buddy phoned me, and he was dying still with the Lou Gehrig's disease. And at that point, he thought he should tell somebody. And uh, so uh, I made an appointment with him, and then this, my friend phoned and said, you better get in touch with him right away because he's just about on the edge. I phoned him, he gave me a full report of what he saw and uh, the whole idea of the inside of the, the craft and this sort of thing. 